Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and this is not Shackleton today. This is Sally. Sally's um, not quite so interested in um, my videos, but she's coming around. Like I say, you have to understand cat psychology and, uh, you know, work hard incrementally to get them to do different things. Uh, so I'm working on her and uh, also on her sister, Mop, but Mop's going to be a tough case. I don't know if you, if I've put Mop on, on my videos. But anyway, what I want to talk about is a recent uh, study came out, very interesting study, that asked the question, when will the Arctic sea ice disappear for the summer? This is a key um, kind of question. You know, it's a key milestone in the climate system when we lose Arctic sea ice in the first September and then in subsequent years it extends to um, August, September, October, and then throughout the full summer. And as I pointed out in a video not too long ago, just to recall, the um, loss of the ice in September isn't the, the biggest, um, you know, it's not the biggest effect on, on, on the climate. It's the loss in the summer months. In, June, July, and August. And of course, you know, to lose the sea ice in September, it's going to be much lower in the other months. So there will be large climate impacts, large effects on the jet stream and so on. But because of the loss, because of the, re that, those will occur primarily because of the reduction of sea ice in those months as we head to the loss in September. So anyway, um, there's been a recent summary paper on this. So I'm going to talk about all of the uh, details of this paper, because like I say, this is a key, this is kind of a key aspect of the climate system. So just a little plug for my blog, uh, paulbeckwith.net, please check it out and please consider making a donation to support my uh, analysis and videos. So I tweeted out this uh, interactive here, when will the sea, when will the Arctic see its first ice-free summer. So this is a recent uh, um, interactive discussion from carbonbrief.org. Okay, so you can actually, if you're on Twitter, you can go and see that or just Google carbonbrief.org, you know, and put in the title and you can find it on the web. The reason I don't put a lot of links is because, you know, if you're interested in seeing it, I don't want to you know, spoon feed you everything. I want you to, you know, a quick search and there you go, you find it. So, uh, you know, it's just a little bit of work for you, a little bit less work for, for me. Um, so this is a Carbon Brief article, interactive, when will the Arctic see its first ice-free summer? Okay, so this is a polar view and, uh, you know, this just, uh, you can see loads of ice here um, and a lack of ice here, just in the title. So, satellites first started monitoring the Arctic in 1979, okay? Uh, we launched satellites prior to that, but they didn't have sensors to uh, determine um, how much uh, ice there was. So, those, so it, it, this required satellite technology, but also sensor technology on the satellites and the ability to get that data back to the Earth. Okay, so the average area covered by sea ice has, has shrunk by at least 40% since 1979. Now this is the average area, and they don't distinguish in this article between area and extent, but I would say they're talking really about extent. The average thickness of the ice has fallen by more than half over the same time period. Okay, so 40% down in extent, um, thickness about half. I think the volume is down about 80%, if I recall correctly. So the question is, is when will Arctic sea ice disappear? Okay, um, September, the pace of change is strongest. Okay, the end of summertime in the Arctic. Of course, each year the Arctic ice goes through a seasonal cycle. It grows in area and thickness in the cold winter months and then shrinks back as the temperature rises in the spring and summer. And so this is the sea ice summer minimum in September um, 2019, sea ice minimum, second smallest on record according to this, beaten only by the sea ice low seen in 2012. So what it is, this article is also about 
something called Mosaic, if you haven't heard of it. Mosaic, it's the world's largest polar research expedition. It's currently underway in the Arctic. Basically, a ship is trapped in the sea ice. Scientists are on the ship and they rotate. There's 300 researchers from 19 countries that are rotating, uh, man, um, being on the ship um, for various stints. And one of the Carbon Brief science writers was on the ship for the first six weeks in the autumn of 2019. Uh, when, the, when the mission started. So MOSAIC, it stands for Multidisciplinary Drifting Observatory for the Study of Arctic Climate. Okay, so many, many scientists of different disciplines, they're on the ship um, at various times. The ship is drifting, it's caught up in the sea ice, so it's drifting around, and they're trying to study the Arctic climate with an effort to try to figure out, try to answer this question, when will the sea ice vanish in the summer and uh, you know to allow the the models um, the climate models which basically cannot predict what the they haven't been able to predict the the loss of the sea ice the rate of the loss they're all underestimated underestimating it so they're trying to improve that and of course the really warm summer in the arctic has really had its impact on the ice this is pretty obvious okay um, and uh, so remember in the melt season in 2019, the Arctic was hit by higher than average temperatures in May and, in May and July, also in you know, June, but then it's like a switch turned off and the uh, pace of the sea ice um, really slowed down. Like it surprised a lot of people. We thought it would be a record year by far in 2019, but it slowed down um, significantly. Now this is the sea ice extent um, in September 1979, it's the dark area, okay, and you can compare that to September of last year, and you can see, you know, the, the huge decrease of ice. Um, the last 13 years have seen, have seen the lo 13 lowest summer sea ice minimums on record in September's. Because there's less sea ice surviving from one year to the next, the average age of the ice has decreased. So in the 80s, most of the sea ice was multi-year ice, ice that survived at least one melt season, but the ice pack has really shifted to be mostly first-year ice. Okay, so what this is, is this shows you the sea ice age, um, and this is 1984-1985, uh, so it cycles through the months, so you can see how it, you know, it grows, it's the largest in the um, winter and then it's at the minimum in September okay but it's filling mostly the basin in these two years then we can look at the 2017-2018 um, case and you can compare and you can see how you know basically the ice is you know it's growing in the winter dropping in the summer but there's very little of the white area here there's a very little of the multi-year ice left. It's mostly zero to one first year ice. Okay, it's not ice that survived longer than two years, which would be um, multi-year sea ice, longer than one year. Um, so again, you can see, you can, con you can contrast what the ice was doing in 84, 85, okay, throughout the seasons, throughout those two years, back to what the ice was doing in the last few years. And you can see the stark contrast between those. You know, the sea ice is definitely on its way out. So the question is, when will it disappear? Um, so this, th what we've actually seen in reality has outpaced even the most pessimistic, pessimistic of the projections made by climate models. Okay, so one of the purposes, a leading aim of Mosaic the expedition is to gain a clearer picture of how natural and human-caused influences are driving rapid sea ice loss. So to, we want to improve the models used to make projections, but there hasn't been a lot of improvement in the models in the last couple decades. Okay, so the top goal of the expedition is to improve these models. Now, how do we improve these models? And we want to do that because we want to answer the question or at least get a better handle on the question as to when the Arctic will see its first ice-free summer. Now, um, 
A number of years ago, I said that I thought it would be gone by 2022, something like that. I mean, you know, it's really hard to predict. Um, there's a lot of variable variability in it, and it's like it's almost like a fool's game to predict an exact year because it depends on so many factors, on weather conditions, you know, et cetera. So, first of all, what do we mean by ice-free? The most common definition refers to a point at which the Arctic sea ice cover at the end of summer falls to below one million square kilometers. At this point, uh, researchers expect the central Arctic Okay, so this is a key point here that that's, researchers expect the Central Arctic Ocean to be completely ice-free with remnants of sea ice persisting along the northern coastlines of Canada, Alaska, and Greenland. I think this, this is incorrect. I think that the last sea ice in the Arctic Ocean will be in the Central Arctic Ocean and there'll be no sea ice left on the coastlines because the coastlines are at much lower latitudes. So the sun angle is much higher and therefore, you know, we can get more heating and more melt. It's right at the North Pole where even though this, you know, it's sunlight, sunlight, it's light, it's day, the sun angle is so, on, is so close to the horizon that the angle of the light is, gla is grazing incidence on the, on the ice and there's not much absorption. There's mostly reflection in those conditions. So I think this point is completely wrong and it'll be interesting to see um, you know, when other scientists come around to my, my way of thinking. Okay, so the point at which sea ice falls to close to zero in the summer will have serious consequences, um, but in some ways it's a symbolic measure, um, you know, re re because we're reaching an ice-free Arctic summer is just a further exclamation point, emphasizing that this is happening, it's dramatic and unprecedented. But from my perspective, this researcher, Marika Holland, the changes are already dramatic and unprecedented, and we can't lose sight of that. So this is very true. The ice, and I've been saying this for an awful long time. So here is a graph showing the Arctic sea ice is getting younger. This is the average extent for between the 22nd and 28th of October in each year from 1985 to 1919. And what you can see is, you can see the, um, basically the darker, colors or the older ice as you go lighter and lighter it's it's um, like zero to one year ice is this one and then one to two year ice and so on okay so we're getting and this is the breakdown here so at the beginning here you know lots of lots of old ice very little and and one this is the extent in millions of square kilometers for in each of the age groups of the ice and you can see the trend is right down and the darkest blue color is getting smaller and smaller, you know, um, and the, the, the young ice, zero to one year ice and the one to two year ice occupies the bulk of the ice left in the Arctic. Okay, so of course, the